Today I'm going to share with you my top 10 crafts for 2022. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. I'm going to use this bundle of roses and this bundle happened to have come in the things that were donated to me by my very sweet donator who gave to the channel. I'm going to use some foam. I'm also going to use my cutters. I use this thrifted heart basket that I have. It's about 12 inches across and probably 16 inches tall. I'm just going to cut this and I like to use my metal ruler to do it and then break the pieces off so that they are underneath the level of that basket. I don't want to be seeing that green poking out. Um, you're not going to see it. It's a little bit showing, but not much. So I'm making sure that my green is where it needs to be. I'm trying to get an idea of how tall I need the tallest ones to be. And then keeping that in mind, I'm cutting them off. You can always trim up later more that needs to be trimmed, not a problem. Look how beautiful this greenery is. Look at the little rosebuds on it. I just had to take a minute and show you this. Stunning. They're so realistic looking. Okay. Now these just need to be poked down in here. I put the tallest one in the back. I want this to have kind of a dome shape. So I'm going to do three in the back. The two on the sides are, you can see here what I'm showing you. They're kind of lower than the one there. There's another piece with a rosebud. And some of them have, um, it's almost like baby's breath or something white in there with it. And it's really pretty. So come, coming outward and downward in the front, about the same height as the one in the back, but more forward is where I put the next one. And then the same thing here. So we're working toward the front and continue to put your roses in there. Some people take the greenery off their flowers and I just don't like that look. Not for something like this. I want the greenery in there. Um, rustic is a big deal for me. I'm not into the modern thing, so um, I like to have that green in there. I love my pops of green. I love things to look realistic. Like you could actually find something like this in nature and then bring it into your house and do it. You know, I really like this. So I'm just adding a few more, just a little bit taller in the back, just to give it a little more. I had more roses to work with, so I'm fitting those in where I can fit them. I'm going to put the last rose in the front, and then I'm going to take a piece of greenery that I had left. I guess one of the flowers came off. I'm going to put it on a pick, and then add it right down. Looks pretty, doesn't it? All angles, y'all. Look at it at all angles. I'm going to add that one last piece of greenery because we're not going to waste it. And then we're going to work on a bow to go right in that space. So this ribbon is from burlap.com. They got in touch with me and asked me if I would be interested in trying their products. And I am very satisfied with this ribbon. I can't speak to all of it. I haven't tried it all yet, but I can tell you right now, I love this ribbon. It is not wired. It has a frayed edge and it's a red and white stripe. Gorgeous and so easy to work with. Surprisingly, because a lot of ribbons that don't have wire, they're hard to manipulate and hold their form, but that is not the case with this one and you'll see. I really put this one through the ringer and made a stacked large bow and still had a lot of body in the ribbon. So continuing along, you saw the kind of bow that I made. I'm going to leave that string in the back and just cut it off here on the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one, only I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger because we're going to have the smallest, a medium, and then we're going to have a large one. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm working on the medium or the one that's going to be in the middle, and I'm tying these all with jute. You do not at this point want to be using a bulky, um, tie, a zip tie, because it's just going to be too much in the middle. Your bow is not going to sit the way it should, and you're going to have a hard time holding on to all of it. It's just easier to use a strong jute in this situation. So I'm making sure I have the graduation of size correct all on my ribbon, and continuing around. Now you can't put the ribbon back on 
once you cut it off, but you can always add a little something extra if you need to. Keep that in mind. Don't be hard on yourself when you feel like you've made an awful mistake. So many things can be corrected in crafting. It is not a big deal and we do not sweat the small stuff here. All right, now we're gonna start assembling this beautiful shabby chic looking bow. I'm going to stack it and tie the first layer on. Making sure it's not going anywhere. We're not gonna need that, so we're gonna cut that part off. Looking good so far. Now we're going to start thinking of the next one. This is just me struggling to turn the bow the right way. Also not a big deal. See, I fixed it. So we're gonna put that other one on top, wrap its string all the way around and leave it on. We're gonna double knot it, triple knot it, whatever makes you feel best. And then look at this bow. This is without even being fluffed. Oh, I love this bow and it's gonna be perfect for this basket. This one is going on my door this year. Go ahead and trim up your ends. You can do angles, you can do dovetails, whatever you like here, whatever floats your boat. And then we're gonna need a way to fix it and I'm gonna use a pick. I'm making a pick with some hot glue across the tie, a little extra piece of greenery wire here and then I'm tying it in so that it dries in there. Once it is completely dry and cool to touch, you can stick that pick straight down in that foam and then fix that bow back and look at this little beauty. I love this. It's my favorite one of all of them. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking this bonus video. Go ahead and do your finishing touches and fluffs. So this time I have a little mason jar and this one came from Christmas. You can just cut off that little piece there. I'm gonna take my utility knife and score this because I do not want to remove that metal looking top. Even though that's drawn on there, that's actually an applique, I want it to stay there and I don't want to scrape it off accidentally. And I don't want it to get wet when I do this part. I'm just covering it to protect it, spraying it with some water and then rubbing my hands all over it because it did not want to peel off easily. You can see I tried to peel it. So I decided to wet it down and now I'm using a little, it's like a little chisel tool or a woodworking tool that I happen to have got in a set at Dollar Tree. And I'm just scraping this off. You can sand it too. Whichever way you like to remove it will be absolutely fine. So once that is done, it's clean and dry. You can go ahead and paint it. Now this time I'm using a different. Um, a different color white. This one is plaster. This has a little bit more of a cream color um, instead of that bright white. I love that and I think it's going to be perfect for this little piece. I'm just going to cover everything except that top. I'm going to leave that there. We're going to set it aside and let it dry. Now once it's done, even though it's not perfect, I don't mind that, you can either grab that glue stick or you can use that Mod Podge again. Either way, I'm going to choose which appliques I want to put on it. And this little truck happened to be an almost a perfect fit. No worries, we're going to trim it down. You can cut off the excess. And I also cut the little, you can see there's like a little shadow of mud on the tires. I cut that off as well. Cut it as much as you need to to get it to fit. And look at that, perfect. So now I'm going to lay down a layer of Mod Podge all over where I'm going to be putting my little appliques and then put them where they need to go. I'm going to use two. So I'm going to use this little honk if you're Irish and the Happy St. Patrick's Day banner that was on there. Now it's going to be trimmed down quite a bit to fit, but that's okay. You know, that's easy to do. And then you can just keep laying it down, looking at it, eyeballing it, and trimming it till you get it exactly the right size to go on yours. And then once it's down, same process, we're going to take some more Mod Podge and lock it in place. It wasn't that easy and so cheap. Once it is dry, I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is like a of a lacy trim piece uh, made out of like burlap that my husband bought from Amazon. He bought it in a pack and I thought this cream color looked really nice with this. So I'm just going to glue it on the back 
and then add a dot of glue on the front to hold it in place. Now, if you wanna add something extra, take one of your extra shamrocks from the earlier project and just glue it on here. But I think it's perfect just the way it is. But you do you and make it perfectly you. This is my big birdhouse. And I mean it is big. I decided to clean it up by wiping it down and then just sanding off the top of it and then all around the sides and the bottom. Just giving it a light sanding so that my stain will be even when I put it on. I've got some, this is like a, a wood stain and it is something that I got from Plaid. I am a Plaid ambassador and it is in the color gray. They do have a dark one too that's like a brown, but I wanted to use the gray here. Don't be disturbed by the color when you put it on because it's not gonna stay this way. The longer you leave it on, the darker it will be. But I wanted mine to be more of just a wash. So I'm just gonna take a baby wipe, which is fairly dry, and I'm gonna wash the rest of it off. It gives a very subtle gray color or gray tint to the wood. And I like that. I like that here because I think it's going to be really good for the technique that we're going to use. This is the most detailed of the three, but I don't want you to be discouraged by the work that goes into it because believe me, the results are going to be so worth it. All right. And if you don't have a good thrift store and you don't have a place where you can find, you know, birdhouses then if you want to buy something new or use something you already have in your yard take it down sand it and give it a little facelift so i'm taking a stencil brush here which has very stiff little bristles and i'm just dipping straight into that antiquing wax this is not watered down i went straight into it because i want this to be very rich and dark so that's what i'm doing and i'm just kind of stippling it down in all those cracks because it gives it a little more depth. It makes the recessed parts actually look like they're deeper than they are. And I like the detail of this. For some reason, it has given me some serious mushroom cap vibes. And I like that. Do you see how it got kind of, um, when I was doing it, it got little splatters. So I said, you know what? That's a little happy mistake that Bob Ross talks about. I'm gonna go with it. So I'm just taking a watered down version of my wax and just kind of raking my finger across those stiff bristles and splattering paint all around it and i love the look of this i'm gonna fix my little bird perch just i wiped it down i had a little mess there just wiped it off the baby wipe it came off nicely and then fixed it back put some more color back onto it exactly where i wanted it to be and then just continued to go around here flicking that paint all over the place I'm redoing the bottom, and I do have a little bit of a mess along the bottom. My lines are not perfectly straight, but I'm okay with that, and I encourage you to be okay with that too, because this is a rustic look, and it really makes this birdhouse look so different than how I started. That's the great thing about crafting. There's no right or wrong, right? You just do what makes you happy and brings you joy, and I always encourage uh, my viewers and subscribers to keep that in mind when you're crafting. All right, so these stickers came from Dollar Tree. They have a bunch of these kinds. They're kind of um, different styles, but they're raised. And I really, I really enjoy the look of this. And it fits perfectly around the little opening to the birdhouse. Is that not the cutest little cottage core birdhouse you've ever seen? But wait, it gets better. I'm going to take these little corner pieces and just kind of Give it a little extra something. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I think this is really cute. And there's four, so it works great. I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick so I can line it up and kind of get it, you know, not perfectly straight, but pretty straight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, and then so it's kind of framed out. The front of the house is framed out, and I like that. But you don't have to do it. You know, whatever you like. And there are ones that have keys on them and all kinds of stuff. So just be creative and and do what feels right to you. Oh, isn't it a beauty? And then I thought, you know what? What would make this even more perfect is to give it a stand. Yeah, I'm going to give it a stand. So check out this candelabra 
or candle stand or whatever you want to call it. Apparently it had a glass top or something on there, but anyway, I got it at Goodwill because it was broken. Apparently nobody else wanted it and I grabbed it. I'm giving it a good cleaning with a fresh baby wipe and then um, I'll show you. It's actually from Ikea. Is that not the coolest thing? Yeah. I'm just going to take the top of this fat, tall base and I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my birdhouse. And there's no wax on the bottom of the birdhouse because if you would have done that, um, it wouldn't stick very good, very good at all. So I'm just going to hold it down until it gives it a minute to catch. So maybe you're not like the style of the first one. Let's try the second one. Burlapfabric.com has sent me some goodies and I got the green, the white, and the large burlap ribbon all from them. I have some thrifted flowers. These are orange and white, but I'm going to change those out in a bit. This is a Dollar Tree sign. Very pretty, and that is from this year. And then I have this egg wreath from Dollar Tree this year. I knew I had to have this. I knew I had to do something with it. Well, I got a little bit crazy and I broke it when I was taking the tag off. So it's easy to fix. I'm just using some masking tape, but you can use electric tape. You can use duct tape, whatever you have to just go over the place that it is broken. Twist it around and now it is good to go. It's strong, no problem. I'm gonna cut down here at, I think I have 12 inches and I'm going to show you what we're going to do for this wreath. So this is burlap. It's not deco mesh, but we're going to use the same technique. I'm going to fold over about an inch here and then walk my fingers up to the end. And the last inch I'm going to fold over and then pull into the center. It makes a cruffle, just like when you're using deco mesh. This is the technique that we're going to use to cover the base of our egg. So I have, I think, 10 or 11 of these zip, of these um, chenille ties. All you have to do is feed them through the outside ring, twist them around. I didn't think you wanted to see all of that. Then you're gonna take one cruffle for each of these segments. So each of these little ties or chenille stems, I don't know why, I cannot grasp the word pipe cleaner today. Maybe my medication, who knows? I might need some more coffee. But this is what we're gonna do. You're just gonna continue all the way around. I use the outer rings for this because I want this to be larger. So I want it to be on the outside rings for that. If you alternate, it's gonna make it appear a little bit smaller and I want it to be as big as possible. I love this cream colored burlap. I thought this would be the perfect way to be a base on this beautiful egg wreath. I think you're gonna like this one. So we're gonna continue around just like this and don't worry about where they overlap. We're gonna adjust that in a minute and you'll be able to be sure that your entire frame is covered. And this does a really good job. If you wanted to save a little bit, you could probably do 10 inch. Um, little cruffles instead 12 inches what I went with and I'm very pleased with it so here we go and this is how it looks go ahead once you've got those together and fix them so that they overlap each other in the right way to be able to cover your frame and look at that coverage oh this is going to be really nice so I'm going to go ahead and start making the bundles of ribbon that are going to go in each one of those cruffles so here you see me using some ribbon that I got on clearance at, I believe it was Michael's or maybe Joann's. We're going to do 10 inch strips. So this is a wired ribbon, really pretty. And I know that gray is a, a very popular color. And then we're going to do 10 inches of our burlap that is wired, that is white or cream. And then we're going to do the same thing with the beautiful green. So now we have three pieces and we're gonna create stacks with these. This is easy to do. You, don't, you can choose any pattern that you like. You 
can put your plaid on the bottom, you can put your plaid in the middle, whatever you want to do. We're going to create an X and then a line straight down the middle. Pinch it up in the center and that is going to be our bundle. Now be sure you can use your little clips to hold it. I always do this. It just makes it an easier process. You can slant or dovetail your ends. I've found that dovetailing the ends really gives it more, I guess, kind of volume when you are fluffing in the end, and I really like that aspect. So just go ahead and dovetail or cut them at a slant. And I wanted to show you on the first one how we do that, and then pull those back apart. You can get an idea of how they're going to look. It's going to get a little crunched up when you put it down on your wreath, and you'll see that. I'm going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to take that off. Remember your clip is on the front side. Push it down into the, the center and then tightly twist this in. You're going to continue all the way around the wreath in the same technique. Press it down into the center and twist it. It doesn't matter which way you lay this pattern and if your pattern is messed up, it doesn't matter. When you fluff it, you're not going to be able to tell. Y'all, we had so much fun doing our little Q&A Saturday. I had a blast. I've been stuck in the bed with a back injury, and I had so much fun. Thank you for everybody who showed up for that. Um, it just really, it made my day. It was a lot of fun, and we got to know each other. We did questions and answers. If you're not part of our YouTube family, consider subscribing checking out that community tab that's on my my front page and following along with us as we do our polls and daily questions and win prizes we have a lot of fun doing that um, we've had a lot of winners and they're very happy you know they're reporting back saying they're happy with their packages and that makes me happy because I want everybody to have the ability to craft and to express themselves and have some joy in their life and a little package is always fun Okay, so you can see now I'm fluffing. I'm turning out all of those tails. I'm dividing, making sure all of my colors are represented and my patterns are represented. And it just makes a beautiful, beautiful base. Look at that. I am absolutely loving those colors together. Stunning. I just absolutely love it. I'm so glad I have ribbon left on each of those spools to do more projects. So you may see these colors again. Now you can see it's still shaped like an egg and I love that. We're going to go ahead and take all of that extra stuff off the sign and we're going to get it ready to attach to the wreath. So use your hot glue, put down your chenille stems or your pipe cleaners or your floral wire, whatever you want to use, and a little glue and a little bit of paper. Once it is cooled, you can go ahead and center it where you want it on your wreath and then feed those wires through the form into the back. When you do this, be sure that you're not pulling it too tight because you will crush down your wreath and it's going to not be as pretty as it would if it looked as though it was floating on the top of the wreath. And that's kind of what you want it to look like. It's just very gently resting on the top. You don't want to squish anything down by doing it too aggressively. So then take the little tails of the ribbons that are nearby and you can use those to cover up the holes that are in your sign there and you want to fluff them out so that you can see everything because the ones underneath you can't see as well. I am pulling all the flowers off of their picks and this is kind of where I decide that the orange is not the best color and you'll see that I changed it to cream. I've cut down my wires because we won't be needing those anymore up there on the top. I don't recommend this type of a pipe cleaner. It's kind of a swirly pattern, but it's really hard to use the wire cutters and cut through the fabric part. That's what's sticking. The wires work, the fabric part does not. So here are my cream colored flowers. My kids are upstairs making noise. Y'all excuse that. I'm going to use my little creamy yellow and my white and just kind of alternate all the way around. And you see, I still have my egg shape, and that's so pretty. I love that. This would be maybe more of a farmhouse look, but I still think that I'm going to make it look more cottagey, and you'll see that shortly. So, of course, I'm going to use my greenery. I'm not going to throw that away. 
You know, that part of the rustic in me is going to remain that way. That's just who I am. And I'm going to start adding down my flowers. Now, right where our ties or our twists are in the center of those floral bundles is where we're going to place these down. You're not going to see it at all. And they just fit. These, these daisies just fit nicely in the cup of those bundles. I love that. And we're going to make a little bigger leaf to go on the bottom part and it's going to go underneath the sign so we don't want to have too much going on up top and then nothing on the bottom and I'm going to add some hot glue of course to hold these things in place I'm going to lift up on it a little bit so that my flower doesn't disappear under the sign I can still see the bunny so I'm happy about that and again Move things around where you like them once you get your flowers in there because they are going to cover up some of the arrangement. And thankfully we can move those wires and those uh, ribbons around because they are not glued down. They're just twisted down, right? And this is how it looks so far. So this would be actually perfect if you wanted farmhouse, but I'm going to make it a little more cottagey. I'm going to add some beautiful little, I think these are ranunculus. And they are a peachy color, which I am loving this spring. Y'all know that. We've talked about it. I am loving this color this spring. And it looks beautiful with this pale, sweet yellow. Just It's just a buttery, soft yellow. And I'm just going to add these here and there. There is no rhyme or reason. I'm definitely going to take the greenery that came with the picks, and I'm going to use that as well. Doing this, in my opinion, adds more of a cottagey look. We're adding that look as if it was actually picked from a garden and brought into your home. And of course, when you do that, you are bringing in the greenery that goes along with it, right? Of course. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around where it looks like I want it to go. I didn't do a pattern with the placement of these little flowers in the greenery. I wanted it to look a little more wild and doing that without a pattern kind of does that just here and there I'm gonna continue along like that so what colors are you doing for Easter this year I know a lot of people in my polls said that they love purple so I'm very happy to say that I will be doing some purple arrangements some purple mmm creations well let's put it that way I definitely have the supplies on hand and I am ready to go with that we're going to continue to place those here and there and I think that looks so pretty and sweet Dollar Tree has several different versions of that sign they have one I think that says blessed um, they may have one that says Easter I'm not sure love and I'm not sure what the other one is but there's at least three of them so if you don't find this one, go ahead and just grab another one. Just go with whatever colors are in that one. Now that is sweet. That is a cottage creation if I've ever... I have this, it looks like a pedestal for maybe a sign. This butterfly. It's like a resin butterfly wall hanger thingy. And then I have some embroidery hoops. Two sunflowers. And a garland here. Just a little section of garland and my Waverly wax and a wet wipe. I'm going to start by taking all of this apart. Now the only thing that wasn't thrifted in this project was my Waverly antiquing wax. Everything else came from Goodwill. So I'm going to take the hoops off. Just going to use the inner rings and first we're going to give them some color. They're fine as they are. If you don't want to color them you don't have to. If you'd rather paint them you can do that too. But I am just going to add some on the wet wipe so we get a light, nice stain and go all the way around the inside, the outside, and the edges of this ring. See the difference in the color? It's subtle, but it matters. So I'll do the other ring too, set them aside to let them dry, and now I'm going to do the butterfly. This white color just, or lack of color, just doesn't have any dimension to it. So by adding some of this wax, we're going to get some shadowing down in the lower sections of the details of this butterfly. And I want all of these to match. 
So I'm going to use the same wet wipe and go over the high spots on this little pedestal. I'm going to wipe it on and then I'm going to be wiping it back off. This is going to, instead of looking like it's dirty, it's just going to give it more of an aged look. And I like that. It changes that bright white to a little bit of a creamier color as well. And it fits into my rustic decor perfectly. And that's the idea when we get thrifts, right? Is to be able to find something that appeals to us and then make it our own. So we're going to do the same thing here. Don't want to wipe on the inside. Just wipe over the top and look how it just settles in the cracks. All right, so we're going to set that aside to dry and we're going to attach these two hoops together. Just going to add a little hot glue and attach them to what will be the top of the topper to give it some more security and to give us some more space to put our butterfly later. I'm going to use some jute and wrap it around where we have them fixed together. Go around and around and around. You can use ribbon for this, um, or if you use some type of a super glue, you might not have to use this at all. I'm gonna add some hot glue, just press that rope down into it, that jute, and then I'll trim off what I don't need. Protect your fingers here. And then I'm gonna just clamp it. I love you guys. I hope you know I love you to the moon and back. Enjoy your coffee break. Okay, so once the butterfly is dry, I'm just gonna get an idea of where I want him to be on there. And I'm going to move on to putting this ring down on the pedestal. So we have a back and a front, it appears, on this pedestal. And I want this to go to the back because when I put my florals on, that little metal piece will be there for me to attach some things to. So I'm using my screw to press a hole in this wood, just a little dent here, to give me an idea of where I want it to be centered. I'm gonna add some of my Gorilla Hot Glue to hold it in place. It's gonna make it easier when I drill the screw in. Be very careful, use a slow speed because you will split this wood if you are not very, very careful. You can use a little finishing nail or something there if you want to. So I've cut this apart into little pieces, makes it a little more manageable. I've cut the stems off of the back of my flowers and I've kept one of the leaves. Now's the fun part, when you get to just play around and arrange. So now I can put one of those pieces right there on that little metal piece on the top to help hold it in place and secure a piece down to the pedestal. I think this is silver dollar eucalyptus. I think that's what that's called. And then I'm gonna start placing my flowers in to make sure they stay where they need to stay. I'm gonna add a leaf in here just so that I have some of that foliage that originally came with those flowers. And then push them in here and there until I get them as full as I like. You can use a little bit of glue to fix it to keep things from shifting around too much if you want to. And then my glue gun was sticking to this piece. I left it in here to show you it's craziness. It kept sticking and pulling away, sticking and pulling away. So once I got it straightened out, I decided to go ahead and add the other sunflower on the base instead of up there on the edge. I'm gonna add a little bit more greenery just to kind of, you know, extend it out a little bit. Move it around where I got the glue on the frame. And then just go ahead and cover up the back over here, the hardware, nobody has to see that. Then I'm just gonna push the backing out a little bit so that it will fit, the butterfly will fit up there over the frame. Don't worry, I'm gonna flip it here for you. And I'm going to flood it with glue. Make sure that that butterfly doesn't go anywhere. Like I mentioned before, um, there's Gorilla Glue in my glue gun right now. So I'm just going to put a lot of it on there and on that jute section too. And then I'm gonna use some clamps to hold it in place and it's going to dry like that. I'm checking to make sure it's cool, and that's been several minutes, so you don't stick your finger in hot glue. Once it's cool, I am going to move on to the next part. I'm gonna cut seven inch pieces of this beautiful thrifted ribbon that I just very recently picked up. Love this. And I'm gonna cut three pieces. I'm gonna crisscross and put one right in the middle. 
We're going to make a simple little embellishment or bow if you want to call it that, although there are no loops. You could still call it a bow, I think. I'm going to take a little of my jute cord and I'm going to put it around the middle, flip it over on the table, and then give it a few knots. This is going to hold everything tightly in place. And if your ribbons flip over on, you just push them back down. You can dovetail your ends if you'd like, and then decide where you want to put that bow. I decided that I like it here on the bottom. So since my cord is still there, my jute cord, I'm just gonna twist it around, poke it through the flowers, around the back of the pedestal, and tie it down. And this is how it's gonna look. So we're gonna start off with some pipe cleaners, some burlap. We're also gonna need deco mesh that is not seen here. You're gonna need a variety of ribbons, at least three different kinds, preferably wired, but if not, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And I'm going to use some jute. This is an 18 inch Dollar Tree wreath. I got mine at the thrift store. We're going to start off by putting down our chenille stems. So I am going to, I started off without uh, turning on the camera, so I took them off and I'm going to show you again. We're going to go around the middle bar and the center ring. This way it doesn't slide around. You can see what I'm doing here under, kind of making an X over it. I'm going to twist it just a few times and you're going to go all the way around your wreath doing this to every one of those little crossbars very easy this is what we're going to use to attach our ribbons and our deco mesh down to this wreath it's kind of a combo wreath i wanted to do something a little bit different and i love the way it turned out so i hope you'll keep watching okay now we're going to loop over the inner ring and the outside ring and put a little twist in there to hold it still now it can still move between it can kind of slide up and down there, but that's not going to be a problem once you get your poofs on, and you'll see what I mean shortly. If it bothers you that they're moving around, you can use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. No problem at all. Continue around like this until you get every little section with a stem, a Chanel stem, a pipe cleaner on the outside. So you are going to end up, when you are finished, with 16 of these little ties all the way around. All right, so I've got some scraps of deco mesh, and wonderful miracles happen every day. Proof will be shown to you in a moment. So this is 20 inches. I thought I would have enough to go around this entire wreath. However, I do not. And I find that out once I get toward the end of the roll and not the end of the wreath. So, not a problem though, not a problem. I'm going to place down a section of that after I've gathered it up. I'm gonna press it firmly into the center of one of those middle wires, just like that, and then just push it through to the back. Now I'm gonna use my ruler to show you. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing this off camera, I just kind of guess. I don't really measure it every single time, but it's completely up to you for demonstration purposes and to show you I'm going to be measuring it just so you know what we're doing. So I think I took a 10 inch poof there. I'm going to show you the measurements here. Yep, 10 inches. And I'm just going to make a poof in the inside, then I'm going to go to the outside. Then we'll go back to the inside. And then after that one's done, we'll go to the outside. We're just going to follow it all the way around. It's sort of a little back and forth motion. 10 inches. I'm measuring it. And I'm just going to twist it around. And those little extras, you can just cut those off. They're not going to be... Sometimes with deco mesh, they'll come... Like they'll pull loose. And I noticed that with Dollar Tree mesh. That happens a lot. This mesh that I'm working with today actually came from the thrift store. And the burlap ribbon that I use came originally from Walmart. I got it on clearance at Walmart years ago. And I've just held on to it, as craft, you know crafters often do. We hang on to things. 
so I thought oh, you know what I've got some blue over there so let's let's just add some blue and we'll make this kind of you know kind of like you would have an American flag most of it is red and white and then you have a section of it that's blue so I thought we'll give it a try so this was sort of an experiment I'm going to untwist my little tie here and holding everything together place that blue in put the little frayed tail from the edge up underneath there with the other one and then tightly twist it down you can see my freckles and I have a little bit of a sunburn I was at a family reunion this weekend had a blast I know I have some family members who watch my videos and I had so much fun I just had so much fun so if you're watching today I miss y'all I love y'all we have to do it again soon okay so this deco mesh is smaller than the other one. I think the other one's 20 inches. This is like a 10 inch deco mesh. So it's thinner. I'm gonna use the same size poofs, but I'm gonna go over it twice to give it more bulk. So you'll see what I mean. Same process. We're gonna go to the inner ring, then the outside, then the inner, then the outside, until we get all the way back to where we, um, to where the red and white stop over there. So you'll see here. I just wanted to leave all this in because some people really need to see it all. So I'm leaving it in for you and I'm going to get back to the end and I'm going to twist it. Now rather than cutting it off, we're going to double it back over on itself and we're going to do 10 inches again and that's going to give us about 20 inches like the other one and we should have approximately the same coverage. So I'm just going back over, so you made another little poof and I'm just going to go back over right where we came from in the same pattern and place that back down and you can see the difference in the poof on the left and the poofs on the right you get a lot more coverage there and I really like the look of this so that might be something for you to think about if you get your deco mesh uh, at Dollar Tree you know maybe double it up if you get it at the thrift store but you know it's a remnant and you don't know if you'll have enough you know go ahead and patch things together this is one of those little happy accidents that, you know, the great Mr. Bob told us about a long time ago. Happy little accidents, like the little happy trees. And this worked out perfectly. All right, at this point, you're probably going to look at your wreath and go, what in the heck? This looks terrible. It looks sad. Don't be discouraged. Do not worry. Believe that this is going to get better, because it does. It's just kind of thin right now, kind of thin, kind of sparse little sad but it's gonna look better so start fluffing out your poofs a little bit and you can see you got more coverage right it looks a little bit better as you go along fluffing everything out and then we're gonna be adding layers onto it we're gonna put burlap on it we're gonna put little ribbon stacks in there we're gonna add a bow to it it's, she's gonna look fabulous shortly give her some give her some time she's gonna look fabulous so you see I've got my blue I want to keep that sort of on the top and on the left and then the rest of that red and white is going to be on the right so now we're going to start with this burlap I'm going to take a section of it that's about I don't know an inch or two bundle it up in my hands and then loop it over same thing 10 inch little poofs here gather it in your fingers poof it up now for me at some point here while I'm filming I stop measuring because a little thing you could know once you get to this point and you've got your base down with your deco mesh that burlap that goes on top you're just going to be laying it right down on top of that other poof so you the measurements are exactly like like what's underneath it essentially you know make sure that that little covering just lightly sits on top of the the base that is under there the deco mesh if you do that and you can stop using the ruler this process will go on a lot quicker although I have to say this is not really the most lengthy part it's usually the cutting all of the little strips of ribbon to make your little um, ribbon stacks that take the most time for me anyway and all that dovetailing you know all those little special details that make it look so great in the end that's the part that takes me the most time and I don't show you all of that okay so we're back to the beginning where we put that first little section of burlap down you're just gonna cut off enough that you can tuck it under and right through the frame now you can start to pull your 
burlap and your deco mesh poofs apart. So they're back and forth, kind of crisscrossed over each other. So you want to pull the burlap to one side and the deco mesh to the other side, back and forth. So deco mesh, burlap, burlap, deco mesh, back and forth, back and forth. You see that? It almost looks like the burlap is kind of threaded through the deco mesh. Do you get what I'm saying? Do you see what I'm saying? And just by pulling those apart, look how much fuller the wreath is already. Look how much better that looks already. Yep. Okay, so now start on the little stacks of ribbons here. This is thrifted ribbon. Surely you can get something like this at Michael's, but you know, Dollar Tree, I'm gonna tell you, I was in there recently. They have some beautiful 4th of July and patriotic ribbons that are burlap with stars. And I think there was one with trucks and fireworks. Um, I don't have those yet. I'm just using up what I've got, but I will be getting some more goodies because I love decorating for the patriotic holidays. So we're cutting them in 10 inches and we're going to dovetail the ends. And I'm going to do the same thing with the red and white and this beautiful fabric trim that I found. I found it at Goodwill. We're going to make it stiffer or we're going to make it wired, I guess we could say, by just doubling it over on top of some of this Dollar Tree burlap. This is such a simple process. I'm just, and this is just cotton that's on top, but isn't this a beautiful ribbon? All right, so I'm going to start off by just cleaning off the end of my glue gun here. And then I'm going to do zigzags and lines right in the center. Because it's the thickest part, it's not going to stick to the table. It's not going to make a mess and burn me. So I'm just going to focus mainly in the middle of that ribbon where the lace is sewn on the other side. You can certainly do this with the lace side up. I just didn't do it that way, but you can if you want to. And then pat it down, rub it, and then you can start cutting off your sections. This one, we're going to cut it nine inches. We're going to cut this one a little bit shorter. And then it's going to get dovetailed as well. So you're going to have 16 of each ribbon that you choose to use. 16. You see, now we have like a wired ribbon. Perfect. Perfect. I love doing this. Continue along just like this until you get the right amount of each of your ribbons. And then... Here are my three patterns. I'll show you how we're going to stack them. We're going to make an X with the two 10 inch ribbons in the back and the nine inch ribbon's going to go right in the middle. Just like that. You can use all 10 inches if you want to, but because this was a fabric bow that's a little floppier, even with the, you know, the other ribbon underneath it, I just thought that I would use it this way and it helps me save that ribbon so I have enough for a bow in the end. Pinch it together, you can use clips and do them all at once, or you can do it one at a time. And just open up where you have your little twist ties. Be I mean, not the twist ties, the pipe cleaners. Be sure you use full length pipe cleaners too. Don't cut these in half, you will not have enough because these are very bulky. This wreath is bulky, and we're gonna be adding a lot of things to it, so leave those whole. Then you're just gonna place it down Twist it tightly so that it holds in the center of the little poofs between the poofs and then spread those ribbons apart. Here's another one. We're going to layer them across like this. Walk your fingers toward each other, kind of an accordion pleat in the middle. Hold on to it. Open up the little Chanel stem or your pipe cleaner, whatever you want to call it, and twist it. You could certainly use floral wire, you know, if you had to. If that was your only option, you could use that. You just have to be careful because you will poke your fingers with that stuff. And it's easier to find these Chanel stems down in the fabric and the burlap and the, you know, whatever you're using as your base than to use those skinny, thin little wires. And besides, these are cheap and you can get them at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. You can get a big package. So you can see how I fan those out. Make sure that you have your ribbons flipped over in the right direction once you get them down and you begin to fluff. At this point, it's not necessary for you to fluff if you don't want to fluff, but I do this throughout my entire process while I am making my wreaths. I pull them apart, I fluff them out, I check out 
the placement and seeing if they're slipping around on the, the wreath form underneath. You can add a little glue if you need to. If you pull anything loose, you can fix that. I like it. I like the way the ribbon feels, the mesh feels, so I don't mind it. Be sure you follow me on my social media. I would love to see you there. Continuing around, all the way around. Now we're into the blue. We've overlapped our red and white. And now we're onto our blue section where the stars would normally be. Continue around. I don't want to bore y'all, but I want you to see what I'm doing. Because it is questionable when you start on a wreath sometimes. It does not start off beautiful. But it usually ends up that way. So we're down to the last little bundle. And I'm pushing it down and twisting it around. And then pulling those apart. You see, you pull them apart. Fix your tails, flip them down, and spread them out. And that is so much better. At this point, I'm not going to add anything extra into the center of these. So I'm going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to trim off all of my extra pipe cleaners. If you would like to, you can give it just one last final twist for good measure and then cut off what you don't need. Or you can poke what you don't need back through the wreath into the bottom totally up to you. See, here I go again, fluffing everything out. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, y'all may, may be tired of watching me fluff all this stuff, but it makes a huge difference in the end. You don't want anything to look like you pulled it straight out of a box. No, you want it to be fluffed. You want it to be pretty. You want to have a representation, uh, representation of all of your colors. See how just flipping them out, just curving those tails under, pulling those out. Look how much more full that wreath is. Now, this wreath would be fine by itself once it's all fluffed out and pretty. I think it would be beautiful by itself with nothing else added to it. You could add some little wooden stars. You can maybe paint them if you like a little Americana look. You know, add some little wood pieces in there if you would like. But this is how it looks, nice and fluffed love this. I really like it. But if we want to add extra, there's always little thrifted pieces like this little sign here. I have a star that could go, a metal star could go in the middle. There are signs from Dollar Tree you could certainly put on there that would be beautiful. They have gorgeous 4th of July things. These were from Target Dollar Spot and I got these at the thrift store. I recognize the tag. And then you could put these on anywhere you wanted. You could put a variety and you could put all that stuff on there if you wanted to. But I really like the color of this one. It's got kind of a creamy white background and it looks more of like an Americana or rustic look. So that's what I'm going to go with. And I have just a little bit of this beautiful trim left and I'm just going to make like a shoelace bow. With this one, I'm not going to bother putting any backing on it at this point because I don't mind if it's a little bit floppy. This is so beautiful. I love finding ribbons at the thrift store because they're so different. And they're definitely um, lots of vintage ribbons that I have found and used in projects that I love. This is our wired ribbon. This is a very easy bow to do here. You saw how I did that. I don't need to tell you how to do that one, but if you have problems with bows, I do have a um, bow tutorial video with lots of different options for you. So maybe if you don't like this type of bow, you want something more full or bigger or with shorter tails or whatever, you can check that video out. I'll have it linked in the description box below as well as any other links that I mentioned. You can find my Pinterest there. I've got lots and lots of free printables and helpful Cricut information and sublimation things. You could go over there and check that out. That's all linked. Now I'm just going to put these bows together by using that same piece of red jute to tie them down. And I decided that I needed to add some of the red and white checked ribbon that we used on our bundles just to keep it consistent all the way throughout. And I'm going to make that bow just a little bit smaller. The same way we made the other wired ribbon because this one is wired. And then I'm going to struggle to tie it just like you see me doing here. By the way, did y'all notice I did my nails? I did. I had them fixed up for my family reunion. Did my toes and I did my fingers. 
And it looks weird to me because I'm not used to looking at my hands like that. It's almost like I'm watching somebody else do it. It's strange. Polish is probably coming off soon. Okay, now you can decide where you want to put your bow. The top, the side, the bottom, wherever you would like. But I thought it would be pretty right at the bottom of the blue section of this pretty wreath. So I'm just going to push the, um, the jute through the wreath, put it onto the form, and then tie it down. If you tie it down really tight, it's going to sink your bow down into the frame. So if you're not looking to sink it down in there and you want it to be on top, be sure you don't pull it too tightly when you tie it on. And then it will kind of just rest in there with the rest of the fabric and the ribbons. And you can trim off what's left. My bow's all crushed. It's going to be, you know how this works, start fluffing. Y'all know the process by now, fluff it up. Start pulling those wired ribbons, really kind of make them do what you want them to do. If you have your ribbon that's not wired in between wired ribbon, it helps to hold it in place. I'm just adjusting the size there of my metal bow. It's not glued, so it slides pretty easy for me when I want it to, but it stays in place though. And then decide what you want to do with your tails. Do you want to dovetail them? Do you want to cut them at slants? Would you like for your bow to have short tails or long tails? They can be equal, or you can cut them at different lengths. And I thought maybe doing it at different lengths would be pretty, it kind of reminds me of, you know, fireworks, how they pop in the sky and you have the bulk of the firework in one place and then you have the little sparklers that come down. I thought that would be kind of a good thing to do with my tails. So that's what I did. That's kind of what I was thinking of, how I was inspired when I did the tails. Get them how you like them. And then I'm going to put this little sign right underneath it. And it's pretty easy to do. It's already got a string on the back, so I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner and twist it down. It tightens up that string that is there on the back of the sign so that you won't see it. And it gives you something that you can attach that to without using any hot glue. So I'll just feed that through like I did the bow. Cinch it down, but not too tight. You don't want it to squish anything. I'm gonna fix my bow how I want it. And just kind of arrange it around the sign. And then um, the sign needs any little extra hot glue or any more um, security that can be done at this point. And I just use a little bit. I love this wreath. A little bit on my base and then hold it in place and let it dry. The sweater pumpkin wreath is going to be the next one. Taking this familiar Dollar Tree wreath form, this is a pumpkin. I have done many projects with this. I'm going to take a infinity scarf, which I got from a thrift store. Never used it because it's hot in Alabama. I'm going to use the other tag and a variety of ribbons. We're going to add some blue today, guys. Look at these white sunflowers. Gorgeous. Choose some greenery that you like. Anything that's going to coordinate with your ribbons is kind of what I go by. Some orange hydrangea. Some, look at these, I love these pigs. Witch hazel bush. This is the first time I've ever seen them. And then other little pieces like sedums or whatever. We're going to take some heirloom white and I'm going to spray paint this frame. While it's drying, I'm going to thread my needle with a little bit of this cotton thread and an upholstery needle. Just like you would a regular needle. Okay, once the frame is dry, you don't have to paint the back. We're going to start laying this on the top. Now the reason we paint it is because I don't want black showing through my white scarf. If anything shows, I want it to be the same color so it kind of blends in together. Now I am going to just start by laying this down. I'm not going to cut anything on this project. So, you know, if you feel comfortable cutting this and thinking that it won't unravel, then that is totally fine. Um, you can do whatever you would like. You know, you can also use an old sweater to do this if you find something at thrift store or something that you're not using anymore. Maybe you got a coffee stain somewhere on the sweater. You could cut it up and use the chest piece to go over your wreath. So I'm just going to start tacking it down. I don't want to pull anything tight because I don't want the ribs underneath to uh, be very pronounced. So the ribs, what I mean is the 
like wired pieces underneath the pumpkin. I don't want that to be pronounced. I want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to pull around and use my little clamps. This is the easiest way for me to do it. It holds everything in place. It kind of gives you an extra hand. And that is very important when you have small hands. Or maybe you have arthritis in your hands. This makes it easier too. We take our help where we can get it. And these are just little clamps that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm going to continue all the way around. I like to go on my flatter surfaces first and then work on the curves. And this is how it is going to look. And now all my little lines are together. I'm going to take my threaded needle and just go through underneath where the stem is. And I am going to tie that in a triple knot. You can do a double knot. You can do a triple knot. The reason I'm tying it to the frame is because if you tried to put the loop through that very loose weave of the fabric of the pumpkin, it would just come right out. So if you tie it to the frame, it's going to stay exactly where it needs to be. You can trim off what's left to keep it nice and neat. And then I'm just going to go to the inside. You can see what I'm doing here. It's easier to just watch and just go over, move your thread out of the way. If you try to keep your head, your, if you're right-handed and you're using the needle in the right hand, try to keep that thread under and around your left hand. And that'll keep it from getting tangled up um, around the other clips and things that are on your pumpkin. It took me a few little tries to get this right, but once I started doing it, I had my process down and it went pretty quickly. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just trying to keep it under my hand. And I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm doing about maybe like a half inch, moving over a half inch. And then when you get to the end, you can just make a couple of loops and knot it off trim it down and then if you've got further to go go ahead and do that entire process again looks nice doesn't it you can barely see it so you want to use whatever type of cord is going to match follow me on my social media and then once it is all done this is how it's gonna look nice nice and smooth nothing is stretched too tight then I'm going to just, on the inside, like I said, I didn't cut it, so I'm just going to put some glue on there. You're going to please use a cool temperature so that it doesn't melt your fingers, burn your fingertips off. And then just pinch it together, hold it together, and then once that's down, you can add some hot glue or cool temp glue, whichever, underneath. And then hold it down, flip it over, and then you can just kind of cup your hand on the top and pressure hand underneath onto your hand above. And this is gonna help hold it. If you see on the right, that's how it looks when it is complete. And you won't see this part because you're not gonna put this on a glass door. It's not that type of a wreath. It's gonna go on a wall or something with a back on it. So I'm just gonna go around and, and continue to press down and add a little bit of glue any place it looks like it needs to be um, you know, stuck down and in place just to give it a nice profile once we flip it over. Now time to work on floral part. I'm going to use a scrap of cardboard and a scrap of floral foam or foam, whatever you have. I'm going to add some glue here. And I've just got it propped up on a box so you can see it. And I'm going to press these two together. It's going to kind of melt them together around the, the um, stem of the pumpkin. So here's my beautiful white sunflower that I've chosen to use. Mine were thrifted, but you can definitely get these at Dollar Tree. I'm just going to put these leaves right on the back of the flower. That was easy enough, right? Sorry, out of angle again. Out of camera angle. But you can see this is how it will look. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of these floral picks. They are um, a little sparse. They did come from Dollar Tree. To make them a little bit bulkier, a little thicker, I am going to just add two leaves from one branch to a branch that already has two leaves on it. Now we have four leaves on our branch. You see how it's got a little curve in it, and that's so it will face forward instead of outward. I don't want it to face the sides, I want it to be kind of facing forward for this project. So here's another little branch, it's beautiful. It's got the little berries on it. Same thing, give it just a little bend, and then we're going to place it opposite on the bottom. Now I cut this 
flower stem. I should have cut it longer than that, but you'll see. I'll fix that later. No worries about that. I'll fix it later. Okay, so I'm going to take these little hydrangeas. I think these came from the Dollar Tree, but I've had them for a little while, so I can't recall for sure. But there's only a couple of little pieces on each stem. So to make those thicker, I'm going to put them in sets of three. I'm going to use my floral wire to just hold those together. You can use floral tape if you want. And then I'm going to put the entire set of three all in one place. Because hydrangeas are full, right? And I don't know why I am so loving hydrangeas this fall. I have done several projects already with fall colored hydrangeas and I'm, I'm loving them. Loving them, loving them. All right, so now we're gonna go up. So we have the bottom right and the top left with the hydrangeas. And then I'm gonna start adding the little witch hazel pieces. These add so much interest and that blue with that orange is stunning. Do you like that? I mean, that's not, this is not typical for me. I don't usually do the blue, but this year seeing that orange and that blue together is beautiful. So I've done a couple of things different. I'm learning, I'm going with the flow, y'all. Just, just a little bit here and there. Now I'm not going crazy, but just a little bit. So you're gonna continue to add in picks where you feel like you need them. I'm gonna add my little flyaway pieces here, my little blue berries at, um, with the little blue seeds. Instead of using the yellow, I decided to add the blue just to put a little more blue. You can use whatever color you want, and those also came from Dollar Tree. These were not in with the seasonal stuff, they were in with the regular flowers, uh, in case you're looking for these. They look really pretty in this, don't they? So you're just gonna add these here and there. And you see me struggling to find the little piece of foam back there. No problem. I just keep going with it. And you're going to add them wherever you feel like you need a little, little extra pizzazz. And then, of course, you don't want to leave the bottom open, so we're going to add one there. Kind of makes my flower a little squished up, doesn't it? If I would have left the stem longer, the flower would not be squished. So you just leave your stem a little bit longer. I want the flower there for now, though, because it helps give me placement of where I am going to put my pieces around it, because that's kind of the center stage of the arrangement part. Now we're going to make some little picks with our ribbons. So the orange ribbon and the blue and white ribbon came from Dollar Tree, and the cream colored burlap came from burlapfabric.com. So I am just going to cut these into pieces um, that are nine inches long, and I'm going to do sets of three because we're gonna make three picks with three pieces of ribbon each. I'm gonna dovetail my ends. You can do slants if you prefer that. I would not recommend that you leave this type of ribbon without a cut because they will fray. This is like a satin type ribbon. It does have wire. They all have wire, and that is very important when you're making these picks because we need to be able to style them or position them and have them hold their placement. So this is all we have to do to put these picks together. And this is easy, isn't it? You're gonna take a piece of jute, grab it, flip it over. I'm just kind of gathering with my fingers a little bit and you can do it this way if you want, but you don't have to. You can just cinch it up and then arrange them. Then I'm going to tie this then I'll kind of arrange a little bit to make sure that I fix the places that flip over. Give it a few knots. You could use floral wire here if you would prefer also. Now what I'm using for the pick is just little pieces of the branches where I have cut flowers off of picks before. So you know you always have the stems left. I save those because they're really good for using in projects. Now I'm going to add hot glue in the middle put that little pick there and then tie it tightly down. This is going to give it a lot of security. And then it glue needs to be dry completely before you uh, try to place it in your arrangement. So this is why the wire is important. You see how it has uh, all that dimension in it? Some are raised above others. You've got little curves in the ends. If you didn't have wired ribbon, these would just flop around. Cute. So we're gonna do that three times. 
and we'll have three of these beautiful little picks. So just like when I'm making a bow, I fluff the heck out of any ribbon I get. Um, if you watch me for any length of time, you know that. It's important, and I love to do it. Love it. Love it a lot. So now I'm just going to start placing these in where, again, I'm just kind of feeling like I want them to be. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. And I'm not putting these in a particular um, pattern or angle. I just like it over here, so this is where I'm going to put it. And this is where my flower being sunk in needs to be removed. So I'm going to put the little witch hazel in that I pulled out. I'm going to pull out my flower, and I'm just going to go ahead and add these picks in. Here and there, uh, a lot of people like to work in a triangular pattern, but in this particular situation, I did not do that. I just, again, put them where I felt like I needed them, or where they would look nice. And I put one up here. Now I'm going to add a longer stem onto my flower, my beautiful sunflower, and then place it back down on the inside. Now it sits above the rest of it and it's not sunk in. Doesn't that look better? Yes, that looks better. So I think we could do a little something extra here. Y'all, those colors are beautiful. Love them together. All right, so now I'm just going to remove the hanger off of this little leaf. And we're going to use it to make a bow to go on the top. And the bow is going to cover up the little hole. Okay? So you can put that wherever you would like. But let me show you how to make the bow first. You're just going to wrap it over on itself. Because this has been cut. So now I have a little piece that I cut to go around the middle. I'm going to trim it down. Add a little bit of hot glue here. And I'm going to grab another floral pick and use that as an extra finger to push that down in place. And look at our little bow. Cute. Now with a little bit of hot glue, I can put it right over the hole in the top of that leaf. And I am thankful that it fit nicely. Now we're going to make a pick out of this leaf. So we're just going to grab another little branch here and hot glue it down on the back and then decide where we want to put it. And at first I was thinking I would put it on the left side, but then I thought, no, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the right. So I just pressed it down into the foam on the right. And this is how it looks. Okay, so if you're not liking this blue, what colors would you have used in this project? You could always have used a yellow sunflower if you would like. You could use a different color, um, scarf, you know, and then go off of that. Pick your florals based on that. That would certainly be good as well. And you can make it smaller. If you don't like such a, a big floral area on the top, you could also leave off the ribbon picks if that's not something that you like. Or you could use buffalo chick if you're into that. So we're going to take this other one and paint it, of course. And then we're going to take a variety of ribbons and some rickrack. One of these is a sticker, but I'm going to use it as a ribbon. I'm going to measure around the outside of that little border. Cut it so it's easier to work with. And then I'm going to prop it up. I have it leaning on a ribbon spool and the candles in front of it are kind of holding it in place where it doesn't scoot around. This gets it up where I can see it a little bit better and where you can see it a little better. It's closer to the camera. So I'm just going to add a little dot of glue, of glue and you might want to use your cool temperature here because you're going to be touching this a lot or protect your fingers whichever way you want to do it. And I'm going to add just little dots of glue here and there or little very thin lines. I was having some issues with my other glue gun and then I ran out of glue sticks. So I'm using a bigger gun right now and I'm trying to get used to the flow. Then you're just going to tap it down. It doesn't take a lot to hold this little rickrack on there, but doesn't it make a pretty little detail? And then we're going to go around the corners. Once you get it all the way around, just kind of go around the corner, 
that's uh, another lovely part of having a trim like that. It just easily folds over. Clean up your glue if you get any on there. And then continue all the way back over until you get to that corner. You can see I'm trying to be very light with that glue. But if any of it does come off, you can just pick it off once it's cool. Trim your corner down, get it nice and neat. Then I decided to take the black and go over the edges of the sign. Right where it's kind of looking, um, where the gray and orange kind of blend together, I decided to overlap it there. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna go kind of over and off the edge. Makes it look a little bit bigger than it actually is. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. Very easy, just a little bit of glue, just like the one, the orange one that we did. And then we can trim off where we need to trim off. And it's so much easier to do. If you just turn it over on the back and just follow the curves that are there, it makes it so much easier. And then we're gonna do the sides last. It will overlap and make it look finished. You can use an orange paint pen or marker or whatever you want. If you have any little areas that aren't covered, you can just go ahead and cover up that gray with your orange on the top too. I'm just trying to fill in those little spots to make it kind of blend together a little bit better. Then we're going to go back to those same little tower blocks and I'm going to use six of these. It doesn't take this much to hold it up, but we're going to use this for supports for lights. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm going to go down, leave a little space, and now it is higher than the surrounding place and it gives us a nice little area for lights. With that said, you're going to take a crafting knife and you need to drill a little hole. Or you can use a screw or you can use whatever you drill holes with. You can use a drill. But in case you don't have a drill, you can use a knife. Feed your lights up through here. These, I am pretty sure I got these from Dollar Tree. Pull it all the way through. Then you can take some mounting tape and mine did come from Dollar Tree. This is very good sticky stuff. Put it on the battery pack and then you can just stick it down. It can be upside down, it can be the right, right side up, whichever way you want to do it. Then we're going to go ahead and glue this down on top of the other sign. You don't want to glue down your lights there, so just make sure you're not sitting it down on the lights. That's what I'm doing, making sure that it's between my little supports here. And then you're just going to run those lights. Once the glue is dry, you're gonna run the lights around the outside. You don't have to do this tightly, but just tight enough that it, you know, the light strand is kind of hidden behind your sign there. And you can use some of that, some more of that mounting tape. I was down to the last little bit. I had a little tiny piece left to stick on the end of those lights and then just stick those down to the surface underneath or to the top of the sign. I'm really not sure where it's stuck down, but it stayed there. And then when you turn it on, it's gonna look like this. It is not a super bright sign. It is not intended to be, but this is what it looks like when the lights are slightly dimmed. And if you like your sign like this, you can leave it just like this. Or you could embellish it with that little pumpkin. You could spray paint it, you can paint it, you can decoupage it, you can put it anywhere you want to on your sign if you would like can see any way that you want to do it or you can do something a little extra special this is a bonus look at this little skeleton it came from Dollar Tree these are a collection of cupcake cups that I've had forever in my pantry a little bit of lace trim a variety of ribbons lots of hot glue we're gonna make some clothes so check this out you're gonna run your fingers around the edge of your cupcake paper. Just get three ones that you like that coordinate. And then fold it over. And then you're gonna cut just a little notch out. Just a little one now because it just needs to be big enough to slide over this little witch. It's gonna go just like we're getting her dressed in the morning. She has no zippers. So we're gonna make sure that it will go above that pelvis and go right up there. 
all right? So now we know that's how we want the skirt to be. I'm going to go around and do the same thing with the beautiful candy corn. Flatten it all out, fold it over, cut just a little notch out right there. So there's another layer of her skirt. And then we're going to take the orange and we're going to do the same thing. You don't have to completely press out the little um, ridges there. You don't have to completely press those out because that'll give some interest in the skirt. Then you're going to trim just a little off because we want each of these layers to be kind of stacked. So we have, we'll have the black on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to trim this one down too. We want to make sure that each layer is a little bit longer than the other one, or each layer is a little bit shorter than the other one, because when you stack it, you want to be able to see each color. So the black is the biggest, and then the orange, and then the candy corn. So see there? That's how it's going to line up. A tiny bit of glue here just to hold our pieces together to make it easier when we put this back on our little skeleton. Just a few little dots. and then press that down together. All right, now she needs a little hat. So we're gonna make a hat now. I'm gonna use the black for this. I'm gonna press it out, fold it again, just like we did before, but this time we're not gonna cut anything. And once we get it into that position, we're gonna fold it over once more. And it's gonna look almost like a little dunce cap. Isn't that cute? Use a little hot glue to glue your edges down. Just make sure that it's gonna fit on her. Then I'm gonna cut one of the scraps and make a little band for the hat. So I'm cutting that off. I'm gonna go right around here with a little bit of hot glue. And now her little hat is going to match her skirt. And y'all don't worry, she won't be topless. We're gonna give her a top two. Okay, her hat is perfect. You could put a little any other type of embellishment on there that you wanted to. And we're gonna put her skirt back on. You see her arms are very rigid. They're, they don't bend. She doesn't have working elbows. So close your eyes if you don't wanna see this. We're doing an amputation. But don't worry, we'll give her her arms back. She'll get them back. I'll tell you when you can look. Don't look yet, don't look. Oh, okay, good. All right, we're good, we're good. She's not in any pain, she's still smiling. Okay, so we are going to take that skirt, now that we can get to it better, and just fold it over as wide as you want the skirt to be. You can leave it completely in a full sweeping circle there, or you can give it a dart in the back and make it just a little bit smaller. And that's what I decided to do. Just gonna put some hot glue right in there. I'm not concerned that it doesn't line up in the back because you can trim that off, and she's gonna be sitting on the skirt, so no worries. She needs a petticoat or a slip. So let's trim this down just big enough that we can glue a piece right on her pelvis. And that is going to give her a nice little cover and a little cute little unexpected detail. I had way too much fun making this little, this cute little girl. All right, now I'm gonna add some of that. It's like a velvet type of trim. I got it at the thrift store, but I know that you can get something similar like in a satin at Dollar Tree. Oh, I have seen it in my stores anyway. There's her cute little hat. Here's her cute little skirt. And then I'm trying to find front and back here. We can put her arms back on. You just have to hold it for just a minute once you put the hot glue down. In any position that you like, you could have her waving if you wanted to. But I want her to be very prim and proper and just have her hand sitting on her skirt in front of her. Now we're gonna make her a cute little halter top. Trim off a piece, we're gonna tuck it up underneath her arms. This was easy to do. This was not hard, although you see me fidgeting here. And then you can just trim it off and glue it in the back. So it makes just like a little, you know, little top around her. And then we're gonna make a halter by just gluing one end down on the left side. Gonna take it around her neck and then glue it on the right side. 
and then you can just trim it up so they're both even and she looks nice and neat. Okay, now we can take our little hat and put it on. Just takes a little hot glue on the front top part of her head since the hat is leaning backwards. That way it can grip onto the, the, uh, the paper there, the cupcake paper. So cute. Okay, don't look. I'm trimming the dress and then we're going to be taking her legs off in a minute. Okay, don't look. Don't look. I'll tell you when to look. Okay. You know bones don't have nerves anyway, so she didn't feel any of that. Okay, now you can look. So now we're going to put her back on the sign and decide how we want her to sit here. She is so precious. I love her. I think I want her to sit right at the top. And I'll put her in the top middle. I'm making sure that I have her positioned correctly. And I'm going to glue her legs down to the skirt. This is going to also glue her sort of into a sitting position. And conveniently, that sign that I use has like a lip on it. So she'll sit nicely right up there. But if you have a flat sign, just use one of those tower blocks. Glue it to the top and sit her right on top of that. I'm going to hold her down for a minute to make sure she stays in place and let's give her her legs back. Now I'm going to glue these where it looks like she is sitting with her ankles crossed. Again, prim and proper, sweet little girl. After the glue is dry, go on to the next leg and then when you put it on, put it on at an angle as well so that her ankles are crossed. And you can use a dot of glue. Um, between the ankles if you want to. Oh, she's so cute. Y'all, she's cute. I love her. I love her so much. Then she needs to hold something. So you can give her a pumpkin or you can give her a little figurine like a little black cat, which is super cute too. But because this is kind of a vintage inspired video, I thought maybe we would do something with a little more pizzazz. So I'm just going to put this little sparkly pom-pom. I'm going to use one of these cupcake picks and just cut it off. And that came from Dollar Tree. And then also a bat. And we're going to make her a little scepter or a wand with the bat. So I'm going to use my acrylic marker here and just cover that in orange. I'm going to add some hot glue and let her hold on to that. So is she a witch? Is she a trick-or-treater? Is she a clown? Is she just a skeleton? I think she is a trick-or-treat and skeleton and she is precious. Look at her. I love it. I hope y'all love her as much as I do and I hope you'll try it. It's really not hard. For the first projects, we're going to have two gingerbread houses. I thrifted two of these little church bird houses and they are in terrible shape. Really, really sad shape. I'm going to give you a good look. They've been dusted off. I've used a brush. I've used wipes to clean them as good as I can clean them. This one has more damage. It's um, had some water damage on the top, which is caused this to kind of bow and warp. Looks like it's coming apart. There's water damage on the bottom, some stains all over the place. And the little bell is stuck in the top too. Now I'm going to use two different color browns. I got a, I think it's a latte brown and bambi brown and um, I'll put those to the side. I'm going to start off by putting down one layer of chalk paint and I'm doing this so that everything will be somewhat hidden and one color so all the blue stuff will be will have white on it all of the stains will be covered in white and hopefully it will cover up and block some of the stains I did have to go back over all my areas that have the water marks um, the water stains and uh, did two coats on that area but I'm gonna do the whole thing front back bottom all of it 
And by the way, the tags on the bottom of these show that they came from Walmart, but there's no year, so I don't know, I don't know when they came out. You can thrift something. You can thrift a birdhouse. You can thrift an old dollhouse. Just use this for inspiration because I realize we're not all going to find the same thing when we thrift. So think outside the box. What do you have that you can use? Now, once they've both been painted and dried, I'm going to put my coffee latte and my Bambi Brown. I'm going to put them together in a little cup. And then I'm going to just blend them. Now, if you want to just use one color, then you can just use one color. The reason I did this is because I couldn't find quite the color that I was looking for. And I didn't have it. So, I just made it. And you can certainly do the same thing. Now, if you don't do the gingerbread thing, but you watch my videos, so you wanted to give me some support, fantastic. You can use these. Leave them white. Use them as a winter wonderland if you want to. If you want to make it traditional, grab whatever color paint you want to paint this and paint it. You can string lights around it. You can do this so many different ways. This, To me, this is like a blank canvas because you have so many options. But I've had lots of requests for a gingerbread theme. So I'm starting off by doing these for you to see how you like them. Can't you see yourself doing something like this? Look, it's Rudolph. My youngest daughter made Rudolph. She's very crafty. She likes to craft with me and she wanted to share it with you. Okay, so once this is all painted and dry, don't worry about the spots where I bump the white. That's not a big deal. I'm going to cover that back up. And then here's the other one. I left the doors white and inside of the bell house is white as well. And the little spindles, just a couple of little places. They've got to be definitely well dried. Now these are little pieces of candy ornaments and pieces of picks that I cut off. I had a bunch that I thrifted and then I found some little glass. These are glass, the candy cane and the little pieces. Um, I could just cut them off the picks and made them, put them in a big bowl. You can use pom-poms for this. You can use beads for these. You can use buttons. You can use, um, these are some stars that I thrifted. You can use whatever type of ornaments or decoration you want on yours. Any fake candy. I'm going to use some of my slick paint and it is white. I've got a couple of different brushes to help me out. And I'm going to start off with this, um, I think this is true red. And I'm going to start painting the poles in the front of the house like candy cane, sort of. Not going to have that traditional swirl look, but I'm going to do like red, white, red, white, red, white, all the way down. Just sort of a little pattern. You don't have to be real precise with this. If it's easier for you to use a paint pen, you could do, you know, paint pen for finer details, whatever you feel like you have a, a better hand for. In the end, all of these, um, all of the details are really going to be covered in a very fine snow. It's going to give it a very, a really pretty frosted look. So you won't see specific details. So if you make a little bit of a mess with the paint, don't worry about it. Now I'm just going to use my little tool here to dry off between my layers of paint. And I do two layers of that red. And this is the look that it has. And here's the other one. I did them you know, pretty much both the same way. I'm going to grab some more of that white chalk paint and go back over this cross. It originally was going to be white, but I bumped it too much with the brown paint, so I just went with it, and then now I'm just going to go back over it and touch it up. Now for the bell, I'm going to use this beautiful glorious gold and a brush that's got some long um, hairs on it so I can reach inside there and paint that bell since I can't push it around or out the uh, MDF or whatever this is made out of is actually swollen and it has closed it in there in the middle so I can't get to it so I'm just very carefully going around the parts of the bell that you can see with this gold and it makes a big difference because the bell was kind of rusty um, I'm assuming since they are actually bird houses that someone had them outside there's nothing inside of them though, so I don't think a bird ever nested. There's no way to open it to get anything out, but you know, you give it a good shake and there was nothing in there. 
and then this bell actually is free so I'm just gonna move it around with my fingers and get all the sides I like this gold over the top of this because it still has that aged look but it just brings the bell out even more now here's some things that you can use I'm just giving you an idea this is something that I thrifted it's just like pearl beads on a rope or on a cord you can do that you can use Rick Rack you can use those bead stickers from Dollar Tree you can use the rolls of stickers to adorn windows doors shutters you could wrap them around poles any way you want to do it you know when you look at pictures of gingerbread houses they are very ornate they have a lot of stuff going on so I'm gonna go with it I'm gonna go with it and use all the little things that I have on hand just to give you some options too I'm gonna do the other door the same way because these are a pair so I want them to be similar similar but not twins now I have just a tiny bit of this red rickrack and I thought how cute would that be on the eaves of the house so I'm gonna put them just on the peaks here and make sure that my end is nice and crispy and not frayed and then I'm gonna cross over the top so that I can fold it over on itself and not have to cut it and you can see what I'm doing I'm just trying to make sure I don't touch the glue and then press it down and see there nice and neat and you can clip off your edge because once it's glued down it's not going to fray it'll stay like you like it but as a reminder and people tell me all the time you can use a lighter to hit the edges of your ribbons and such so that you get the you know keep the phrase away it seals the ends all right so now I have it on both of them and I have a little more left so I'm gonna go right here on the steeple right at the top and add some more of that rickrack I want to use as much as I can before I run out think of all the things you can use here you could use jute twine you could use baker's twine baker's twine would be really cute because you know gingerbread the kitchen theme the baking theme baking spirits bright so this is how it looks when it's got both of those on that house and then I'm gonna add some on the bottom of this one just right on the front and trim it off and then I'm gonna add some more of that beading right around this section this is just gonna give it more um, yeah y'all know y'all love me saying the word dimension yes I know I say it every video but it is so true it gives it some dimension it's not laying flat it gives it more detail it's more ornate and I just think it's fun you know I just think it's fun so now I'm measuring around this opening to see how much I'm gonna need before I trim it off then I'll just snip it a little bit longer that way if I've made a mistake in my judgment there I can um, you know I'll have a little more to work with and then I'm just gonna go around and I get shaky hands I, I don't know about y'all but my hands get shaky so I found it sometimes helpful to either hold my wrist that's holding the the glue gun hold it with my other hand and it helps kind of steady me a little bit you don't have to use hot glue I am using Gorilla hot glue but you can definitely just use um, any type of glue that you like I like the hot glue doing these projects for y'all because I can do it quicker and time is of the essence when you're doing six and more projects a week two videos a week and by the way if you're new to my channel welcome I do put out content on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 o'clock Central Standard Time and that is p.m. welcome to the channel alright so now we've got a little bit going on here starting to look better starting to look more like it might be gingerbread right now it's time to do putting the icing on the gingerbread so I'm using this paint here and I'm going to just on the top of this house I'm gonna make the roof a little different I'm gonna use the little curves 
that you see in a lot of gingerbread houses. I am not trying to make this look perfect and I have no intentions of measuring for this type of a style because when you're making gingerbread cookies, most of the time they're not perfect. Am I right or am I right? They still get kind of messy, especially if you're doing it as a group, as a family. Kind of gets kind of fun, but kind of messy. Okay, so here's one side of the roof. You got to be so careful, so careful while it's wet. Then I'm just going to put like a little line here, a little squiggly line on the top that does eventually drip down. I'm going to do it on both sides. Now I'm going to the other house. This is where I'm going to kind of use a ruler. I'm not precise with it, but it does help me get my pencil lines. I'm just taking the pencil and making like a, a plaid checkerboard, whatever you want to call it, only without the different color tiles in it. And this is going to be the outline that I will use to make the next style. This is going to look sort of like diamonds on the top. You can see that there. And then I will start following those lines. If you need, if you have this type of glue, which I mean not glue, paint, whatever you want to call this, if you have this, I do recommend that you frequently wipe the tip off so that you're not smearing anything because it will get sort of like a little bubble on the end and you don't want to make a big mess. Also, when you're using the bottle paint like this, be sure that you kind of, uh, I use the term that you burp it, you kind of shake it down and make sure that way it doesn't splatter when you start using it and just take your time. So you're going to do both sides and then let it try. And now I'm just making like a little red and white ornament wreath or candy wreath to go on one of them. I thought it would be cute since I had a bunch of these left and I'm just going to make a circle to put them together. Now with that paint, it does take about 12 hours to completely dry. So you, this is a project that is not fast, but it is so worth the payoff. Oh my gosh. At the end of this video, y'all, if you're not shocked, then you must truly be a professional because I was very shocked. I have no training for this type of thing, no training with crafts, no training with art other than high school art, you know. So for me to have the results that actually came for this, it, I was surprised and very pleased. Very, very pleased. These will be in my house for Christmas where I can see them. Now I started off with those candy canes sort of on the poles there, but they kept popping off when I touched it. So uh, I did move them. You'll see that at the end of the video. Now I've got some tiny little crystal beads and they're sort of iridescent on one side and crystal on the other. I'm just going to take these and just add them here and there on the top. There's no pattern and I don't do it in every single square. I just add a few pieces. Do this however you like. You could even use like a table scatter here. You could use confetti. You could use sequins. You could use beads. Anything that you would like to use. You could even use some faux gumdrops, faux candy of any sort. Now once the houses are decorated, we can start putting on that beautiful frosty look. So I'm just going to be using a flat brush and then I have another brush that's a little bit finer so I can get in all the little spaces. And every place that I want to put snow, I am going to use my Mod Podge. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding some Mod Podge here and there. I do recommend that you pour your Mod Podge into a separate cup or put it on a different surface because when you start putting on the snow, it's going to begin to stick to your brush here and there, and you don't want to be dipping that back into your Mod Podge. Going along here, I'm going to go all around the brown parts, all over the tops of the candies, any place that I want it to look nice and frosty, which is basically the entire thing. I did not frost the door but I certainly did everything else. So you can see how I'm doing it, where I'm putting it. And then I'm, you gotta really put it on kind of thick on the top when you got those grooves in there like I have. So I added it to the peaks. You can see where it dripped a little bit down and I like that, it looks snowy. I'm gonna go all over this and then I'll just take the snow that's underneath it or grab the bag 
and then sprinkle it on there. Put this over a tray. This is going to make a mess. So put it over a tray and then that way you can just scoop it off of the tray and continue to use it. Nothing will get wasted this way. And when you're finally done with your project, you can put it in another bag and save it for another project. So this is just where I'd missed a couple places with the glue. I'm adding some more glue. Just gonna grab some more of that and sprinkle it down in there and see it's fixed. That's all you have to do. Now on the steeple here, you can see how some of my snow is mixed in there. I'm just using some of my extra snow and just sprinkling over the top. If you get a big enough coat on there, you can kind of pat it down with your fingers to help stick it into your Mod Podge. If you don't have Mod Podge, you could also use Elmer's glue. Some type of a liquid glue would work for this too, I think. As long as it isn't fast dry because you won't be able to get your glue down and your snow on it in time for it to stick. So here are my windows. I traced my windows out, put some string around those, some ribbon in the middle, put my pieces of candy all over this. And I'm just gonna continue around here. You can see where I put things. So you didn't see me do it one at a time, but you can see I've tried to show you step by step every time I've done something, the difference. So go back and slow it down if you need to, or go back and pause it, take some screenshots if you need to do screenshots, but you're gonna get a really good look in the end. The next project is going to be Frosty's hat. I thrifted this little basket hat, basket weave hat, I don't know. It's like a bluish black color and um, we're going to just deconstruct it because I like the bones of it but we're going to change it a bit. So just remember what it looks like now. I'm going to cut the hat band off and when I pull the glue it does leave a little spot there but that doesn't matter. It has quite a bit of dust on it, um, so when I do baskets and wreaths that are dusty, I just take a big brush and just brush at it, and it gets the dust off of it, and you wouldn't believe the dust that falls off. Look at this table. Look at all that. That came out of that hat, and of course, the one little strand of paintbrush. Okay, so I saved styrofoam. This came in a, um, a table box. I'm going to use my little knife from Dollar Tree, my styrofoam pool noodle cutter. It works really good. I thought at first, you know, that is so gimmicky, but it really does work nicely. I'm going to cut enough foam to put in the bottom. It's not quite tall enough, but I got it the width that I want it, but it needs to be taller so that it sits right at the top. And I was making sure also that you can't see that foam through the, the weave. So I'm just going to keep kind of chopping away until I get the right I guess thickness to go on top of that and then I'll fill in on the sides with a little bit of foam. You don't have to do this neatly, it's not important because this is going to be covered up with um, something else so it's totally fine. A little hot glue, you can put that together and then shove some pieces inside, it's nice and tight. Didn't even have to glue it. So I'm going to take a piece of this, um, I think it's like a snow sheet, you know you use it for decorations. I'm going to cut a circle out of it that will fit the size of the top of the hat. You can flip your hat upside down if you find something like it and uh, trace on it and then tri you know trim it out that way if you would like. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue right on the edge here to put that snow down because this top of the hat is going to have like a snowy appearance. And you could use a white uh, piece of felt maybe for this. The thing that you would need to make sure of is that the weave is not too thick that you can't puncture a hole because we're going to be placing florals in here and you want to make sure that you can actually get the wires from your floral down in here. If you can't though you can always get like a, a metal skewer or something and poke the hole in it and then put your greetery in it with a little hot glue. So there's some options for you. So I have this piece of thrifted garland. It's got like a silvery 
um, glistening kind of look. It's it's very mellow though, not really loud. Uh, I'm going to pull those pieces off of the garland and then I'm going to cut down a piece of ribbon because I want to give him his hat band back, but I don't want it to be that traditional plaid. So I'm going to use some of my wax here, antiquing wax, and then brush it onto this black. When you add this brown on top of this black, it gives it a warmer toned black. And for my decor, it just gives it a better look. This is not necessarily to age it, to make it look aged. It's just to give it more of a rustic look, more of a brown toned black or a warm toned black. You see, it does make a difference. I don't have to do the bottom. No one's going to see it. And you're just going to continue all the way around with this until you get all of your color covered up. You can get little um, snowman hats uh, lots of different places. And you could certainly feel free to use something that came from St. Patrick's Day, maybe. Or, you know, a different holiday. A New Year's, you can get hats or whatever. You could use something like that if you wanted to. So just because you don't have the exact same thing as what I'm saying, you can kind of apply it to, to what you're seeing here on a different scale. So I'm going to wrap this hat band around. I want that threaded side up and the rough side down so that you won't see it. All we'll see is the finished product, which will be the nice, neat trim on the top. And so now he has his hat band back. And I'm going to start adding down this greenery. I'm just going to use some hot glue. You can see in here, I don't know if it's because it's garland, that it, like one side of the greenery actually is sort of flat and the other side is um, more elevated. So I'm going to flip it so that the flat side goes down against the brim of the hat because that's where we're gluing it, to the brim of the hat, not to the, the tall part of the hat. Lord, anatomy of a hat. I have no idea what the pieces are. Okay. So what I'm doing is adding like two and then one, then two and then one, and I'm going back and forth. It gives it a little bit of a variety and it doesn't make everything look so matchy matchy. It's rustic, you know, it's rustic, it's woodland, it's winter wonderland. We want to give it that movement and that feel of being kind of wild and out in nature. And so we're almost done with this. And I encourage you to use some leftover picks for this. You don't have to use all the same thing. Use whatever leftovers you have from Christmas and tuck those in there. Can you imagine some of that fern in there? That would be really pretty too. But I'm using what I have, like I said, to make these winter wonderland pieces. And these are some of the pine cones that came in there. They also have a little silver on them. If you get these pine cones on projects and you wanna take them off and reuse them, it's just a piece of wire wrapped on the inside. You just cut it and then untwist it. Very easy. It's just looped around it one time and then twisted. And then that's how it's put on the decorations that, you know, you might thrift. So I'm going to use hot glue. I don't want those wires scratching up my table. I'm going to use the biggest of three, put it down first. Then I'm going to take the medium size one and put it down next, kind of right beside it. And you know, I pick these up and look at it before I actually glue it. So I know how in mind how I want it to be. It's a lot easier that way than having to go back and fix it. So since I've run out of brim over here, I just put the glue in the little, um, the sides of the pine cone and then stuck it into the sides of the other one. It fits like a puzzle, it's perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna start with the top part of it and then I'll go kind of back and forth on the top on the sides. You'll see how that's gonna work. These little pigs look like little greenery trees to me. So I'm just using them as trees. I'm just picking some pretty ones that have a good shape, that have that kind of a teardrop shape to put there. I'm going to use a little bit of that willow over there near the pine cones. That's going to be almost like the feather in the hat. Then I'm going to make a bird nest. So I'm going to take some of this berry Garland, I guess is what it's called from Dollar Tree. You can get this all the time and in a bunch of different colors. Usually uh, the colors go by season, so you'll get more orange, like in the fall, and then the reds and silver and stuff like that. You'll get 
closer to winter time or Christmas time. So all I'm doing is a start off in the middle with just two loops and then I'm going to expand the loop outward like a swirl. So the diameter is going to get larger and larger as I go. Round and around and I know this looks boring but there's method to the madness. See I want this to be I'm pushing upward and I want it to be in that shape of a nest. Around and around and then you can just twist the tail around and then manipulate the little strands so that you get it into the right shape that you like. And I'll put it right there. It's a good place for it. I'm going to use some of these floral pins and just push these down into the snow and the foam and it goes in there perfectly and you can get those little floral pins any place I think that you can find crafting supplies I did not get mine from Dollar Tree mine were thrifted but I know you can get them pretty much anywhere and I can't imagine they would cost that much money but they are very handy to have for some projects so now the bird it's actually a bell but his bell is broken he is glued down we got a little cardinal right there in his nest or her nest whichever one then you can begin to cut your picks apart. You don't have to leave your picks in, in one piece. Cut them into pieces to suit what it is you need. So now these look like little trees. All the leaves are gone for the winter time and they're just branches sticking up there with a little bit of snow on them. And I think that texturally it really does something to the piece because it's more of a woody, look and then you've got the little trees beside it and they're so full and green and lush and it just reminds me of winter time so in these little bags of assorted scatter you can get from Dollar Tree there are a couple of different types of things you can use so I was just kind of digging through there to see what my options were and I found a little strand of this white pit berry so I decided to use it almost like a little bud branch too and then stick it with the trees and then another piece I put with the pine cones and our little willow feather and then there was a little piece of pine in there I put that in for a little bit of a different look you know we're in the woods you don't just have two types of trees there's all kinds of stuff out there so these little what are these I don't know but they look like little flowers to me and I really like them I think they're pretty I'm gonna add those here and there around the pine cones on the brim and I'm also gonna put them around the bird and on the platform you know just wherever it looks cute wherever I feel like I need a little extra something there's also little pine cones in there so I'll add some of those little snowy pine cones here and there I know y'all some people say I just do too much I just kill it I should have stopped four or five steps ago but that is just not my nature it isn't my nature but I do highly recommend you do what is best for you you can't tell people that they're doing something wrong just because that's not the way you would do it, you know? We've got to be kind, not critical. Let's be kind and supportive of everybody's crafting. Just like when you ladies send me, and gents too, if a, if a gent's going to show me a picture of his crafts. But um, you ladies like to share your crafts with me and you email them to me and I love it and I love looking at them and they're all beautiful in their own way and they're so unique because everybody does it differently. That doesn't mean they're wrong, right? It just means they're different. Different's good in my opinion. So I'm just tearing some more pieces off here and just placing them around in the greenery. Ugh, I love this piece. I love this piece, y'all. I really do and I hope that you like it as well. If you enjoyed this video of my top 10, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so very much for stopping by, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.